Yeah. Yeah. Um, welcome You're back. hitting record. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I've oh, been sorry. recording. Yeah. Okay. Welcome back to uh, the Bullshit Filter episode 81. Bullshit Filter the News episode 81. Papa Bear, yes. we're doing it live. Yeah, there's exciting. No one on here with us. It's just us. No safety net. It's just yeah. us. We can do yeah. this. We can yeah. do this. Yeah. yeah. So you have to keep your clothes on this time for a change. <sighs> um, Obviously, you don't care about ratings. No, go ahead. That's fine. <laughs> Well, let's start with an update on the U.S. election. Um, okay. Yeah. So, um, interestingly, I believe that the uh, uh, we're recording this, by the way, for future reference. Uh, Friday, the eighteenth of December, twenty twenty, my time. Mm -hmm. Thursday, the seventeenth of December, your time. Um, I believe that the electoral college votes have officially been counted. Yes. By the electoral college. Mm -hmm. uh not yet by congress no that's in january that's in january and who gets to decide what the tally is in january well if all things were normal which they're not in several different ways for this year supposedly after, after they've received all the votes uh mike pence the vice president who is the president of the senate is going to then supposedly honestly look at the numbers, get the numbers out and officially declare a winner. And when that happens, it is all over with. And I got to be honest with you, Cam, I did not know about 17 of these steps of what it takes to elect the president because <laughs> we never had to deal with this shit before. But since yeah. Trump is contesting, we have to go through this. So I didn't know any of this mm. existed, but hopefully it's going to be over with on January 6th. But I can bet you a dozen donuts for s somehow it won't be. They will keep this going. The drama. So what happens if Mike Pence has the piece of paper in front of him that says, whatever it is, 307 electoral votes for uh, right. Joe Biden. And he goes, yeah, Donald Trump was the winner. Yeah. I just Landslide. Uh, counted Landslide. him myself. Landslide victory. Yeah. Uh, interesting enough, uh, Goering in Nazi Germany did that. Somebody, they were doing a critical vote and somebody was going to uh, veto or do something. He starts calling out and Goering's in charge of the chamber and Goering just literally ignores the man he's like anybody anybody they're like yeah yeah you know whatever german i don't know he's yelling out and he's like okay nope it's, it was dismissed so i mean there is precedent for that but if he does that you've got to think the democrats are going to lose their freaking mind but then again it's legal so civil war i have no idea and it, the civil war starts right in the uh, house of congress and house of representatives mike anyway. pence is the decider it's george bush's old job i'm the decider <laughs> Does does Mike Pence have the cojones? Or no, 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 no. Is he that loyal to Trump to leave reality behind? That's the million dollar question. I, I look, I suspect not. I think uh, uh everyone's getting off the Trump train as quickly yeah. as possible. We saw uh Bill Barr, the attorney general, get fired slash resign slash whatever. <laughs> Right. Last week, uh, it was mutual. It was a mutual breakup. <laughs> Coincidentally, uh, not long after he um, just my camera, so you see where there. There you go. So you can see more of my unironed shirt I threw yeah, on this morning. It's hot. Uh, <laughs> it is hot here, man. It's very hot today. Sweaty, um, sweaty balls. Um, <laughs> coincidentally bill barr resigned slash was fired just a week or two after he uh, acknowledged that uh, joe biden had won the election i've got that to they, ask bro. that sorry, sorry that he, he acknowledged that he had seen as the attorney general head of the department of justice no significant evidence of fraud yeah he should know now does he really think that that is going to somehow salvage his reputation after all the things you know i don't know i i think it's more wishful thinking on another Republican's part, but I think he's still going to go down in the history books, at least as far as Democrats are concerned, as one of the worst AGs there is. But I mean, I guess it's a gesture on his part. We should accept it as that. That he's yeah. making a statement, I guess. Weak, but there you go. Yeah. Look, I really don't know how that's going to play out for him and, and I yeah. don't really care. But what yeah. is interesting is uh, that I saw you posted this, I think, this morning that Trump has just announced that he has declared he's trying to intervene 
in the Texas case that they were trying to bring to the Supreme Court, uh, the SCOTUS rejected it. Um, I believe they said Texas had no standing in the issue because it wasn't actually about Texas. It was about other states that they were trying to get SCOTUS to throw out the votes. Mm -hmm. Trump has intervened, and as I understand it, he basically wants to get up in front of the Supreme Court and argue the case in front of the Supreme Court. Could you give me just maybe 10 seconds, 10 seconds of how you see that going? He's up there. He's at the podium. He's looking. He's got his notes written in crayon. They're in big letters. Can maybe just give me like 10 seconds of his opening remarks. Well, the first thing he's got to, no, the first thing he's got to do is crush up a full vial of Advil (laughs) And uh, no, not Advil. What's the thing that he Adderall? Full Adderall, vial of right? Adderall. Snort that yeah. in front yeah. of the Supreme Court justices. Do, do, yeah. Just hold on a minute. I just need. <laughs> I just need to take my medicine. Does anybody got a hundred dollar bill? <laughs> <laughs> then. Yeah. He's like, we had a beautiful election. It's all beautiful. <laughs> we won by a landslide. You've all got beautiful jobs. Half of you up there have me to thank for the beautiful jobs that I gave you, beautiful jobs that you wouldn't have. You were going nowhere. You were a loser before I came along, gave you this beautiful job in the Supreme Court. You owe me. I have photos. I have, I I know where the bodies are buried. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's so, look, there's a couple of things that I've learned. um, I, I guess we've all seen in the last month or so. Right. Number one is that um, Trump really doesn't have a plan for overturning right. the election. It, it's a scatter shot, throw a bunch of mud at a wall and hope it sticks. Um, yeah. I mean, I really half expected that uh, he and his people would uh, double down uh, after mm-hmm. they lost the election and pull some right. heinous shit to uh, you know, uh, overturn the results of the election and they've done nothing. They've just been yeah. waffling about, uh, they've really got nothing really serious in train. They haven't, they yeah. haven't uh, launched a war. They haven't uh, just said, well, fuck you all, I'm not leaving. Mm-hmm. Um, surprisingly to me, but in some ways it's not surprising because Trump's been useless all along He's and now he can, Continues to be useless. Yeah. 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 He's a coward and he's also not really um, <laughs> a winner. If he was a winner, like he claims yeah. to be, yeah. he would have, I mean, he has all the elements. Like, I obviously don't want to see him do this, but right. he's got massive amount of support. Mm-hmm. He basically owns the GOP. He had 70 odd million people come out and vote for him. Um, mm-hmm. At least half of those, I would guess, uh, rabid Trump supporters. Mm-hmm. He could have um, basically pulled a Julius Caesar, I think, if he yes. wanted to. He could have tried anyway. A lot of questions answer. about whether or not the military would have supported him or even parts right. of the military would support him. But I'm sure some somewhere in the 73 million people who voted for him, there are some yeah. uh, generals. But well, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I guess for me, Trump is like the ultimate uh, studio gangster. Uh, He's really tough in the studio. He's got his guns. He's got pictures of big piles of cash. And he's got his women with the booties out. That's all fine. But it's all show. It's all fake. When it comes to actually doing something like Julius Caesar, Trump is just not that person. He's used to bullying or intimidating until someone collapses. That really doing something like that, that's not who he is. Plus, you have to remember, he's made at least $172 million dollars since the election, you know, all these people who do like Trump tell me constantly, my family, they get emails all the time. Oh, have you supported to the to the war chest? It's not over with yet. Trump is going to take it. He just needs your support. If you could just afford $10, it would really make a difference. And we're going to get this across the line. Bullshit, bullshit, bullshit. But the point is, he is raking it in. Why wouldn't he keep that? And if you have no shame and if you have no moral center, why wouldn't you keep making these outrageous statements as long as you can? Because that money is just flowing in. I mean, it's 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 feeding time for him. Yeah, he made one hundred and seventy million dollars for the Trump Retirement Fund in yeah. a month and a half. Yeah, and he's still um, got until January sixth. I would keep. I'd keep it going. Keep yeah, it going. absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I think it'll keep going after that, and that's the big question. Like. Yeah. What happens after this? Let's say uh, yeah. Pence 
reads the numbers. Um, it's Accurate. all over. Right. When's the inauguration? Like the Jan 20th, I think. Um, January 20th, yeah. That all goes ahead. What happens to the GOP then? Um, you know, the GOP has aligned themselves so closely with Trump. Yeah. And I think, it, 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 so the, I mean, like, I don't think Trump really wants to do, go through all this again. Um, but it's no fun. He, he's obviously tapped into a really easy moneymaker by fleecing these, yeah. uh, these dummies. Yeah. Um, Who are poor. In a lot of Does ways. he Struggle. set up his own yeah. political party? See, if I could, I really do believe that Trump is the kind of person, let me just show up, pizzazz, pizzazz, hey, you know, whatever. But any kind of organized, um, long duration work, it's just not his cup of tea. He likes to bounce back. You know, he likes to bounce around. I have a hard time seeing that. I think he's just going to keep milking it, making appearances and, and loving the adoration, but not the real work of politics. Who's here? Kieran. Hey, Kieran. Welcome to uh, the Bullshit Filter. Don't feel, don't feel obligated to turn your camera or mic on unless you want to. You're welcome. Yeah. Oh, we're good. There you go. Oh, you did. oh. hey, Kieran. Good for you. Hi. Hey, how's it going? I'm, I'm in the garden with um, Her Majesty. This oh, must be from uh, another another meeting a little while back. No. <laughs> <laughs> hello, hello, Her Maj. <laughs> Remind me where Maybe. you are, Kieran. Uh, in Sydney. Ah, COVID hotspot number one in Australia. Yeah, yeah, I'm on the no. right side of the river though. I'm okay. <laughs> Relatively right, no, speaking, yeah. what, what's an Australian hot spot? Is that like seven cases? What are we talking here? Seventeen. Uh, so, oh, Seventeen. Yeah. It'll. They're thinking it might be in the hundreds today. Wow. Uh, okay. I'm sorry. I shouldn't joke about it, but they had another breakout there a uh, day or two ago, and it's. Uh, Disappointing yeah. because we were all getting ready to travel around again. And uh, we've just had the borders open between right. Queensland, New South Wales and Victoria like two weeks ago. And now God. Sydney's got another breakout. Yeah. And our prime minister yesterday, um, uh, Scott Morrison said that New South Wales is the, the gold standard state for um, the coronavirus response. They haven't made any mistakes and yada, yada, yada. And hey, fucking Queensland. The Ruby Princess. Oh yeah, you want to be the Ruby Princess, yeah. But was, what about Queensland? An astounding statement to make. I couldn't believe it. And, Has um, nothing to do with the fact that you have a Liberal Premier down there, I would imagine, mm. versus the Labor Premier in uh, Queensland. Yeah, and Victoria and Western Australia. Where... Well, I, yeah, I don't think I don't think the Victorian Premier is getting any awards for handling the crisis. Yeah, well, I think. For getting it back under control, he probably should get awards. But um, yeah, but he shouldn't have let it get out of fucking control in the first place. Yeah. Is the point? I I would say that eighty percent of the deaths were in um, aged care homes, which were actually mm. outside of his responsibility. Mm. So, uh, Is anything outside of your responsibility when you're the premier? Well, probably not. It happened in on terms his of royal politics. Yeah. Well, I think. Look, I, I think he did do a good job getting him out of it. But uh, the whole hotel quarantine thing. Anyway, we're off track. You're getting us off track already, Kieran. You only give me one minute. <laughs> we're talking about we're talking about what happens to the Republican Party after the inauguration of Biden. So there's a couple of options. Number one, Trump stays as part of the Republican Party, and he keeps doing what he's doing, and he's the acknowledged as the leader of the Republican Party. It's option one. Number mm. two. He steps down from that position and they try and reinvent themselves again. They, they have a huddle and they take a knee and they try and figure out what they're going to do now post Trump right. um, and figure out what do we do about all of the Trumpites who are the rabid, you know, extra, like the Republicans weren't rabid right wing enough. Now we've got an extra rabid hmm. right wing to, the Tea Party confluence with the Trump thing and the religious right and all that kind of stuff. Third uh, is that he goes, uh, well, you all betrayed me. Um, I'm going to go off and start my own political party, the Trump party, him, right. Ivanka, Jared, Don Jr., the other one, the other daughters, his ex-wives. Well, <laughs> I, I think that would be the I think that would be the best outcome for 
America and and the world. But because, would that would that Trump party flame out between now and 2024? Is my question. You got yeah, seven and three million votes, man. I mean, as I said, a lot of those people are probably at least half of them have got to be yeah. rabid Trumpites. But but here's the thing: and, and, a lot of votes off the Republicans, though. Yeah. yeah, I'm I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. But here's okay. the thing: and because I am related to uh, Trumpites, um, if Trump even stays anywhere near a camera, they're going to listen to what he says for the next couple of years. But what if the Republican Party goes, you know what, we appreciate the energy that he brought. We appreciate the fact that he, some people say that he gave the Republican Party a backbone that they haven't had in a while. What if we get someone younger, better looking, who doesn't make as many faux pas, but still has the same basic message as Trump? We try to slide someone else in there, get him, this person, and it's got to be a guy because we're talking about the Republicans to take those votes away from Trump. And so maybe Trump's Trump kind of flames out because he's in the seventies and he's just going to keep saying stupid things. And it's all about him anyways. But if you're the Republicans, you've got to do something to attempt to pull those people away. Cause you can't just have him mouthing off for the next four years and then run again. I mean, I, I think that's suicide, but like you said, Cam, he, he got a lot of votes this time around. So who knows? Well, yeah, I mean, they're going to be in this tug of war with Trump supporters. I think if the GOP try and excise Trump, the Trump supporters right. are going to be furious uh, yes. and they're going to double down. They're, they're not the kind of people, I mean, Americans, generally speaking, aren't the kind of people to go, you know what, you're right, we made a mistake, um, yeah. sorry. I've we'll, never uh, said that. We'll address that. <laughs> what was George Bush 1's famous line, I'll never apologise for America. Yeah. I don't right. care what the facts are. Um, so, and, 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 you know, Trumpites, I, I, I would guess even more so because that's part of the whole appeal of Trump is that, uh, the bluster and I don't apologize and I'm always Outsider. right. And America's always right. Yeah. Et cetera, et cetera. Except when they elect yeah. the wrong guy, then they're wrong. But outside of that, they're yeah. always right. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens after this. Um, you know, what happens to the Republican party and, uh, yeah, how that plays out in terms of American politics. Yeah. Well, the thing that's going to be, and I'm just going to say, use the word entertaining for me, is that the Republicans pretty much have to wait to see what Trump is going to do because of all the reasons you just said. Does he linger on? Does he keep doing something like stay tuned or whatever? Does he drag the Republicans out for the next four years so they can't try to re- um, define themselves or to or to pick a, a front runner or anything like that. He could keep the people on the hook and, and the Republican Party could be in, on the national level, could be in limbo for the next four years. I mean, that's just, that, that's that got to be gut-wrenching for them. But, the, but my most favorite thing is it is completely within Trump's grasp to go, you know what? I did the president thing. You, you turned on me. Uh, you've soured me to it. I'm bored. I'm not going to do it anymore. And he could just disappear back into his little world he is that selfish that he could just say, yeah, I know 80 something or whatever, 70 million people are looking to me, but fuck it, I'm going to go back and enjoy my life now. He is capable of doing that. And he could do it on is, a whim. He could do it tomorrow. And nobody should there, be surprised. Um, yeah. Isn't there something, there's a legal case going on with the people that live around, live around Mar-a-Lago. Yes. They don't they've want found, it. They found a clause that a, a yeah. contract he signed when he turned it into a golf resort that he, he wasn't allowed said, to live there. No one's allowed to be there for more than seven nights in a row, something like that. There's a specific number. They're like, so you can't yeah. move there. And But he's like, Psh, yeah, whatever. I'll have my lawyer, Rudy Giuliani, take a look at it. <laughs> well, the, the thing about him going back into private life, Ray, is mm -hmm. yeah. you're forgetting about the 170 odd million dollars he's just raised in the last month. Oh, he can I mean, probably keep are you, but would I you walk point. away? Would you walk away from a cash machine like that if you were him? He won't. He can't. So you make a very good point. But, it, it, but it, I get the feeling that a lot of times, besides when he's giving these speeches in front of these diehard fans, he's not having a lot of fun. I mean, he's used to doing whatever he wants. Uh, he, he's got to really somehow make up with Melania, his wife. I don't know. I just, I don't know if he's having fun anymore. You know, and maybe, but you're right. I mean, if he can keep raising that kind of money, he's probably going to keep mouthing off because why but that's the thing okay so yeah. he won't be president right he's, he's free 
He's he free. Can just, he can he, he can, can say whatever he wants, do whatever he wants, and do anybody in, he wants. Yeah. Keep in mind that uh, you know uh, my feeling all along has been that as soon as he's out of the office, the uh, Southern District of New York Attorney already, General, they're already going to come after him with a ton of yes. lawsuits, tax evasion, the, fraud, you name it. So he needs the money. money it's the corruption that he has to worry about. Yes. Right. So he'll so need it's money. not not Russia and the money. rubbish. It's corruption. Exactly. He has a huge exactly. issue hmm. with with graft. Uh, well, yeah. I mean, I, I think I've told this story before, but I know a guy. Or I knew a guy twenty odd years ago who's dating one of my sisters. He was a New Yorker. He ran uh, restaurants and clubs. He was a chef, but he ran restaurants and clubs in Times Square before he moved to Melbourne, where he was mm-hmm. running stuff here. And he told me plenty of stories about Trump and the mafia. This guy was an Italian too, who who's right. had a cousin, I think, that was uh, a made guy. And he was, um, you know, telling me stories about Trump 20, 25 years ago and about how, um, how corrupt he was and running New York and the property and blah, 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 and the bribes and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So, you know, who knows what... New York uh, are going to throw at him, keeping in mind too that the CFO of the Trump organization uh, turned and his lawyer, well, not Giuliani, Michael, what's his face, turned. Cohen, Cohen, Cohen thank you. Yeah. Uh, they've, they both it's turned right. and gave evidence. Uh, so the yes. New York Attorney General, SDNY uh, Attorney General, has got to have the goods on him, plus the whole uh german bank scenario that they've That's been right. uh, chasing Deutsche. down yeah. so they they must have a ton of stuff ready to come at him he's going to need he's going to spend the rest of his life fighting those cases yes. he's going to need a ton of cash and you know it's still debatable how much money he actually can get his hands on and he still uh, owes a lot of money yeah. Right. Um, yeah. So, so look, I, I uh, anyway, it's going to be fascinating yeah. to see. Yeah. Speaking I'm, of I'm investigations, not sure he's got much of a life left to live. He, I reckon his health must be shocking. Cheeseburgers wow. will keep him alive. I mean, the the preservatives in the cheeseburger will probably keep him alive for the eight million dollars of free drugs he just got at Walter Reed. Uh, <laughs> probably gave him a big dose too. And uh, Adderall, did, he'll just survive yeah. on Adderall for years. Well, you Speaking heard of when he? Yeah, go ahead. I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, I was just going to. Go We're ahead. going to move on. We can't. We can't yeah. do this, time. So I'm going to move on. Um, Hunter Please. Biden's the Hunter Biden investigation. Completely innocent. No, not really. So Sorry. we've we've talked about the whole Hunter Biden thing uh, mm-hmm. many times on this show over the last whatever year, right. I guess. Um, now it's interesting. So we now know that the uh, U.S. Attorney's Office in Delaware is investigating Hunter Biden's taxes. Right. So um, I think this was one of the other reasons why Barr was fired is Trump was pissed that Barr didn't announce yeah. that there was, they were investigating Biden before the election. And this apparently goes back uh, to 2018 investigators, yeah. well before Joe Biden was, uh, had announced mm-hmm. he was running for the White House. Yeah. Um, you know, I uh, you know I think th- this is fascinating because the fact that this story is just coming out now is mm-hmm. interesting for a number of reasons. I mean, you can look at it a number of ways. You can look at it that uh, this has come out now to try and hurt Biden's presidency. He's got to appoint someone to run the Department of Justice that's investigating his own son. We Upward. know that when uh, the when Ukraine was investigating the company that his son was a director of, Biden did things to get them to fire the prosecutor, mm-hmm. uh, replace the prosecutor, um, and we know that there are arguments about you know whether or not that was uh, valid or not. But right. um, the other argument here is that you know from the Trump side of things is. Why didn't everybody know about this before? Why didn't the media report on this before? Why didn't the DOJ announce this before? Why was this kept a secret until after the election? Mm-hmm. Well, don't you, 
if you're investigating someone, don't you want them to not know because they might take certain steps to hide or destroy evidence? I mean, I'm sure a part of it was political, but a part of it, I'm guessing, is basic uh, investigation stuff where you don't want the person to know that you're onto them. So maybe they'll make a mistake or you, maybe you can uh, get access to things. But you're right. I mean, this whole thing, the timing on this is so weird. Um, there's there's a lot more to it than we'll know. We just we'll find out hopefully later, but we certainly don't know now. But timing is everything when it comes to this kind of stuff. Well, hold on. This has been going on since 2018, apparently. Right. How long does it take to get your ducks in order before you advise the person right. that you're investigating that you're investigating them? Surely, if you I don't know how it works over there, but here, if you're going to be investigated by the tax department. The first mm -hmm. thing they do is contact you and say, we're investigating you. We're running an audit. Give us all of your paperwork going back 10 years. So Give us naive. all of your documentation. That's so <laughs> naive. How else? You Aussies. Uh, Rudy, otherwise, doesn't, Rudy, doesn't Rudy Giuliani have the laptop? No, the FBI has the laptop. No, um, didn't, Rudy, didn't Rudy have it? He, no, he got a copy. He got a copy yeah. of its contents. Mm. Yeah. Of the hard drive contents, yeah. yeah. And then he From posted the it to, who did he post it to? Yeah. Tucker Carlson? Tucker, uh, well, New York Post ran the story. I think it went to yeah. them. He talked to them. Yeah. yeah, but he posted it to Tucker Carlson and then it got lost in the post. Oh, that's right. That's yeah. right. yeah, yeah. A Damn USB post. stick of some of Because it was so sensitive, I can't let anyone see it. And then he just posted it in mm. Mm. like a general mailbag and it got lost. Well, it's COVID. He's been COVID safe, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Good for him. Wipe down the mailbag. Yeah. So this is fascinating. Now, it's the other interesting thing, and I've been saying this for the last year, anytime you read anything about Hunter Biden in the media, mm -hmm. the media immediately says there is no indication that right. Joe Biden is involved in this whatsoever. They're, they're contractually clear. obliged to use that sentence at least three or four times in every story. Right. They're doing it in here as well. <laughs> there is no indication that Joe Biden is under investigation. Yes. However... And Right. We do know from the stories we've covered in the last couple of months that there is evidence, this came out as part of the New York Post laptop story, that at least in one of the deals that Hunter Biden was working on with China, and apparently there's the part of uh, this investigation is his uh, relationship with various Chinese business entities, um, that he did have, it would appear, secretly was putting aside some equity for I think the big man they called him, which according to Hunter Biden's former business partner, Anthony, Mr. Bobolina, Mr. Bob Bobolina, uh, was st that stood for Joe Biden. So Joe, is so any investigation into right. Hunter Biden's tax affairs is necessarily going to involve Joe Biden, the president. Doesn't matter. Let me give you two reasons why. One, because jo the little George Bush, whichever one, the second one, started a freaking war and he's not in jail. Trump was never really threatened with jail until he gets out of office and Biden is now officially president. You can find whatever the fuck you want. Biden's golden, baby. He's not going anywhere. And by the time he gets out of office, he'll either be dead or senile and he won't remember anything. So I think Biden's going to be just fine. Is the son going to embarrass him? Yeah, probably. Did his son probably do something wrong? Yeah, he probably did. We, I mean, that's why you get into positions of power to make some cash. But I think Biden's going to be just fine. A, a crack smoking prostitute fucking retrobate do something wrong no who, who's no. who's ever heard of he's that he's cleaned up he's clean he's found god or yeah but before he found god he was a crack smoking hookers. prostitute fucking yeah, yeah. You yeah, know, joe, biden, joe biden's but, gonna be fine so but i don't i don't really care that he what's that michael Freddy line i don't care who they're screwing in public i care who they're screwing in no i don't care who they're screwing in private i care right. who they're screwing in public because that's yes, a, yeah. That that really is. I mean, Hunter Biden can do all the coke and hookers he likes. Yeah, and he's I not in office. I don't really so, care if his dad doesn't sit there and try and fix the calamitous state that America is in. I get really angry about that. You know. Yeah. And what's he what's um, he going to do, Kieran? What can he do? Do you think? Uh oh. I. Uh, it's a fantasy, but he has to get um, he has to get the the two houses of parliament 
in the United States, which one of which is controlled by the other guys, who are, mm-hmm. as we've discussed, for now, poisonously. Oh yeah, that's right. They could tie it up good, and they. Um, January fifth. Okay. Well, I think um, there's the tax system in America is a disgrace. There has been a war on the working class for forty years. A successful war. And yes. yeah, yeah, and it. Yeah. Um, that needs to stop the amount of wealth that is in the hands of the the point zero one percent in right. the United States is absolutely obscene, and that money needs to be ripped out of their hands. Um, and it and needs you think to Joe, be. You think Joe Biden's going to do that? No, the guy who's to do. the guy who's been the was the senator for Delaware, oh, no, no. the he, most corrupt money laundering state in maybe, the union for forty maybe. years. Maybe it's the credit card state, years. isn't it? Is that the one? Yeah. It's the. Oh, he, uh, he won't do it, but that's what he needs to do. Yeah, right. but he's not going to do it, right? He's uh, he's Mr. Corporate by the book. He's not going to do anything. Although, I mean, Chrissy and I have been talking about this recently. There is a, mm-hmm. an outside chance that he could pull an LBJ. LBJ mm-hmm. is the most corrupt, heinous <laughs> motherfucker ever. He's a genius political operator, though. But he knew yes. LBJ knew he was a one-term guy, so he just went, "All right, what's the what's the fucking point of politics if you're not going to try and yeah. achieve things?" So he went for or it. legacy, or Biden's, legacy. Biden's yeah. seven. Biden's seventy-seven, something like that. Yeah, he's the oldest president ever, isn't he? Or an yeah, elected seven, president? Seven, yeah, oldest eight. man elected president. He, yeah. he yeah. is not going to do a second term. No, no. no. So he's a, he he is might he just do an transition? LBJ. Yeah. He might, he might think, okay, um, you know, I need to worry about my legacy. Let's do a couple mm-hmm. of big, bold things. But again, unless something happens with the Georgia runoffs in January, he doesn't control yeah. both houses. He's not going to no. get anything done for at least two years until the midterms. Um, so he's not going to yeah. get anything done. No. Now, the other I- one is ele- electoral reform. That, that electoral yeah. college is, is ridiculous. Yeah, and it's that's not going to change ridiculous. either. That's not going to change either. Hey, Biden is going to be remembered for my, being... My dad says there's only one democracy on earth, and it's Australia, yeah. because in this country you have a say whether you like it or not. So <laughs> you, you, you have to vote in Australia. You don't get a choice. Or well, you, I don't think, you want to pay a, pay a I fine. Don't think we're the, no I, I don't think we're the only country with mandatory voting. I think we are, aren't we? Or maybe New Zealand? Yeah, what about I th- I th- the UK? Nope. Really? Canada? Yeah. I don't know. Other Commonwealth nope. countries? Nope. Really? I don't think that mm-hmm. can't be right. Yeah. Did you see? We're the only one with po- mandatory yeah. voting yeah. and uh, not preferential voting exists in other countries. Um, but um, the preferential voting is good because it weeds out um, fringe candidates, mm. which is actually a good thing. Because yeah. otherwise you end up with a party of you know, a parliament with sixteen different parties or whatever, trying to form coalitions. And the other one right. is um, ma- mandatory voting. Uh, gives a layer of validity to every election. That says there's so you cannot disenfranchise anyone. It's just you're in. You know you're. Right. So here's a here's a list of countries with compulsory voting. Hi Jimmy. Um, Argentina, Australia, Austria, Belgium, Bolivia, Brazil, Chile, Cyprus, Ecuador, Egypt, Fiji Egypt. Islands, <laughs> Greece. Yeah, I mean, as long as the military, as long as the military approves your uh, vote, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You're okay. Well, uh, okay, I'm wrong. Greece, there. Italy, Liechtenstein, Luxembourg, gotcha. Nauru. All fourteen people there get to vote. <laughs> Paraguay. Peru, Singapore, Switzerland, Thailand, Turkey, Uruguay. Wow. Nice. Oh, uh, not New That's Zealand. More, way more than I thought. Not New no yeah, no, yeah, no yeah. Commonwealth countries. How did Australia end up as the only Commonwealth country, former Commonwealth country? That's a great story. Singapore. Do you know why? Should find why? Out. It goes back to World War I. Um, Billy Hughes was a Labor rat, Prime Minister. He, uh, he wanted to introduce conscription. And he lost, he lost a vote. And then, so he introduced mandatory voting because he thought if you forced oh, everyone okay. to vote, he would win the next uh, referendum on conscription. And he lost that one too. And we've just always had it ever since. 
but not conscription. Uh, Scott, Scott. <laughs> no, we never had. We've, well, we had conscription. The Menzies brought Vietnam. that in. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, the lottery. It was the most insidious way you could do it. Um, yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's cool. But, um, Jimmy, hey Jimmy, where are you calling from, Jimmy? No. Jimmy. You don't want to tell us, Jimmy. 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 There he is. He's getting angry. Jimmy's getting angry. <laughs> Jimmy's getting angry. His screen is getting red. He's, he's, think, he's in a staring contest. I think Jimmy's a Russian bot. I don't think he's real. You blink, Jimmy, I won. Yes. Yes. Hello, Jimmy. Can you say hi? Stamp once for yes, Jimmy. Two yeah. for no, if you can hear us. Right. Hey, Jimmy. <laughs> this is about as successful as most of my dates. She's not going to talk to me. Not With your wife. And you're even With married to them. Yeah. Mm. Oh, Jimmy's gone. Jimmy, Sorry, Jimmy's Jimmy. left. Did Jimmy I left I the building. So... <laughs> He's not going to take this. <laughs> yeah. All right. Let's talk about the, uh, the assassination. Yes. Um, okay. This happened a few weeks ago now. Uh, mm -hmm. The somebody, it's assumed it was... Iran, um, Israel, sorry, Israel's uh, assassination of the Iranian scientist uh, mm -hmm. Mohsen Fakhrizadeh. Um, mm -hmm. uh, no, I, can you brief me on that one? I, that must have passed me by. Oh, yeah. So a few weeks ago. Uh, November 27th. Top, a top uh, Iranian nuclear scientist was assassinated in Iran. Uh, there, were, there were various oh, versions the of the story. Something? Well, there was a version uh, initially that uh, he was pulled over and shot by a bunch of guys who jumped out of a car. Then there was a story that it happened via a drone attack. Right. So we're not exactly sure what the actual story was, but he was uh, leading, if not the top nuclear scientist in Iran. And... Um, yeah. The assumption in all the media sources seems to be that Israel did it with U.S. Um, acknowledgement, green, you know, yeah. approval, green, green light. light. There we go. There we go. Yeah. Um, and uh, I mean, okay, so there's a there's a, a bunch of factors involved in this. Um, it, it's but the thing that I want to talk about, which fascinates mm -hmm. me the most with this, is the number of uh, American Democrats that I've spoken to that seem to be okay with it. They seem to support yeah. it. Oh, well, yeah, he's Iranian. Um, well, he's an Iranian. What, he's a scientist. He, he was working on a bomb. It's a good maybe, thing. That he, that maybe, possibly. Well, was we're going to go ahead and assume that. The Americans are going to go ahead and assume that. So it's a good right. thing for democracy. Anyway. So why can't you kidnap him and put him on trial? Kidnap him and send him to the Hague for for for, for breaking the what killer. Law? Well, that, well that's it. Yeah, it's right. Basically, the game is if you think he's done something wrong, and you can mm -hmm. get them, you you would. Well, Israel is a lot like Charlie uh, in Always Sunny. It's, he's the they're the wild card. Israel's the wild card. They're just gonna supposedly to protect themselves they're just going to take people out and it, it seems they've been taking uh, scientists out in iran for a couple of years now but this is that's, gangsters that's their that? version that's their version of charlie work exactly. is they have to go and assassinate people <laughs> take them out yeah yeah <laughs> yeah so that's the, the the first thing that surprises me is how uh happy americans yes. are with this they just seem to even We're the good. people on the left are like ah yeah that's fine extrajudicial assassinations of scientists. Sure. We don't have a problem with that. Um, the second thing is just the lack of uproar about it, generally speaking around the world, yes. including in this country, when Saudi Arabia was alleged to have assassinated um, the, the uh, Saudi slash American journalist right. a couple of years ago Shogi? in a bathtub. Oh, with the, with the bone saw. Yeah, Khashoggi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Khashoggi. Um, massive, massive uproar around the world. Yes. Uh, when Israel does it, nothing, 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 nothing happens. It's like, oh, yeah, they killed a yeah. guy. So, yeah. uh, what's for dinner? Like, yeah. it's just, it, it just blows straight over the, the 
the media, which created uh, a, you know a shitstorm over the assassination of Khashoggi, mm-hmm. nothing happened as a result of it, obviously. But, but at least there was a shitstorm for several months there, about it. There, there was a lot of be. finger wagging. And there this, should be. Yes, yeah. but th- this not mm. even any finger wagging. Really, it just it was yeah. a story for a day, and then it it blew over. Can you prove to me that he is not an evil scientist? If you well, can't, he doesn't have. I mean, he didn't have the. He didn't have the crazy hair for a start. Right. To be an evil scientist, you got to have the crazy white Einstein and a mask <laughs> or something. Yeah. 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 Good point. Good point. Yeah. Even if he was, so they're Just currently that... the enemy. So yeah, because well, they did what exactly? Could, well, I have, I've had, I have this, I have this argument that um, with the Irish question, um, and my wife is from Northern Ireland and is a very British person, but I have had arguments with her that the difference between a British soldier and an IRA operative is one wears a uniform and gets paid to commit acts of terrorism and the other one wears a balaclava and does it strictly for um, political reasons. Love of love of country. Right. Yeah. Patriotism. Um, Patriotism. Yeah. yeah. And that yeah. ethically is the one that goes around killing people for money and wears a uniform actually the better yeah. person than the one that doesn't get paid to do it. <laughs> yeah. And, and it. How's, your, how's your sex life, Kieran? <laughs> <laughs> Touch and go. Touch and go. Mostly well, self-touching. If I've, um, if I've been getting lucky for a couple of nights in a row, I, then I can probably bring it up. But uh, if I want to get lucky for the next couple of nights, I, <laughs> yeah. I can't bring it yeah. up. <laughs> no, cut, cut it, cut it. Cut you, it you, have to, you have to talk about these things, though. You have to. Yeah. You can't. <laughs> is, is yeah, we do. This, probably don't, not talk about it enough you know right. but, but um, isn't i'm sorry but isn't an assassination I also waited, like this she was in the room before i waited till she left oh, the room before i said that <laughs> yeah it's all about timing but, all yeah. about you've timing. got headphones on though that's good she can't hear us yeah yeah yeah, yeah she can hear yeah. us say that so yeah okay. oh, oh she's you, back you, <laughs> actually well speaking X, of uh X uniforms name. right uh, ray and i are doing an interview next week for the cold war show with danny shearson I think that's how he pronounces his name. He's mm-hmm. um, an ex-major, I think, with the U.S. Marines, West Point graduate, and um, he's coming on. He's now a major anti-war activist, and uh, he's going to come on and talk to us about his experience uh, being a Marine in uh, Iraq and Afghanistan and uh, what a crock of shit. He thinks the whole war over there is and the, how the U.S. is basically just an imperialist empire. So it's, I'm looking forward to having him on to chat because, you know, everyone's been hearing me say that on this show and the Cold War show for ever. Yeah. To have a, a U.S. Uh, ex- former major Marine come on and say the same thing will be interesting yeah. to see, get his uh, first-hand view on what they're doing over there i've heard interviews with him before and and read some of his articles and he talks about the fact that you know he signed up after 9 11 and then he Mm. was deployed and he got over there and he said very quickly he realized oh this is just a bunch of bullshit and we're not going to win this is ridiculous and the more he he started to read started to read the history of the middle east and he realized oh we're just the latest in a long series of imperialist forces that have tried to control this area nobody none of them have won we're not going to win this is just a clusterfuck. Exactly. Uh, send me yeah. home. It's all, it's all going up the Kyber Pass. Yeah. <laughs> That's not nice one of my joke. dad's lines. I can't live on oh, yeah. that. Yeah. Good dad <laughs> joke, that one. Can I, if I could just for a second, when it comes to the assassination of the uh, Iranian scientist, go back to the question, qui bono? Who benefits? One, if Israel did do it, it, or even if it's pr- reported that Israel did it, it keeps the the, uh, the region unstable, which benefits um, Israel in a certain way because they, they know they have the backing of America. So Israel gets to keep the tension going. America is not going to come to some kind of detente with Iran. That That's good for um, Israel. And if Trump truly is pissed and he wants to put Biden behind the eight ball, 
what better way to do it is tension in the Middle East. I mean, come on, that's just it. It, it gives some. It gives something to everyone involved, but theoretically, what they want. It's 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 perfect. It's beautiful. Well, of course, Benjamin Netanyahu has been struggling to win an election over there for the last few years. Right. Um, and there is a certain contingent over there that, uh, mm. you know, love an autocratic tough man who's uh, taken it been an uptick in Palestinian, the Muslims. Um, Palestinian deaths slightly too, isn't it? Um, oh, I haven't been keeping track, Kieran. Uh, yeah, I think in November there was, um, yeah, a bit of an uptick in, in deaths again. Um, by the way, local. welcome yep. Joanne uh, to the show. Uh, and if you want to weigh in, Joanne, feel free. Oh, she turned a mic on. Hi, Joanne. Hello. Sorry, I'm not. I use my wife's. It's Jimmy. Uh... <laughs> Jimmy. Jimmy's back. Jimmy's not Sorry, angry. I, uh... I tried on my uh, smartphone and I couldn't get it to work before. Oh. And I, I figured you guys were probably wondering what I was doing, but we were yeah, just I'm making, we were just making uh, fun of you, Jimmy. I'm sure you were. Yeah. <laughs> Jimmy's angry. Jimmy's left the call. Where are you? Where are you calling from, Jimmy? Uh, Montreal. Montreal. Montreal yeah, yeah. Yeah. You don't have compulsory way. voting up there. We just mm. discovered Jimmy. No, we don't. Yeah. No. Fake and, democracy. Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, that's it's uh, you know it's it would be great to have it because the participation rate isn't very high. And, really? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's and, too cold. Uh, but but you've cold. got legal weed, so who yeah, cares yeah, about yeah. politics? It's a good, uh, it's a good trade-off. It's a good trade-off. We, we're we're going to do a story on legal weed uh, or the situation with weed in a minute. So I'll, I'll bring you in. You can give us your uh, perspective yeah, in a second. So just finishing the story about the assassination, uh, you're right, Ray, qui bono, who benefits? So I think Benjamin Netanyahu likes to look tough. He's always been rolling for, for decades now. He's been rolling out the whole Iran's going to have nuclear weapons in five years line. He's got yeah. a slide deck that he pulls out every five years and just puts it up and everyone nods and goes, oh, yeah, that's a really yeah. scary thing. As I've said a million times, though, even though Iran denies that they're working on nuclear bombs, there's no evidence that they're working on nuclear bombs. The Ayatollah has come out repeatedly and said nuclear weapons are uh, uh, not something that Islam condones or supports and it's anathema right. to... Now, he may be lying, they may be lying, but there's no evidence, that, to the best of my knowledge, that they're lying. It's too expensive what they to say, maintain, aren't they? Well, it's no. part of it. What they're saying they're doing is they have to build nuclear power for their country because they know mm -hmm. they can't rely on oil, plus they're you know, hit by US sanctions for decades yeah. now, which takes a, a, a burden on their economy. They need nuclear power. But uh, anyway, that's beside the point. The point here is that an assassination happened and no one's, do, no one's doing anything about it. The US isn't complaining about it, to at least as far as we're aware publicly. In fact, Mike Pompeo, um, mm. who uh, Danny Searson will no doubt talk about when he comes on the show because he's written a, quite a, an extensive piece of um, investigative journalism on, on what is known as the West Point Mafia, of which Mike Pompeo is... Uh, major part of he went went to West Point. Um, <clears throat> he's a class of '86, I believe, along with another of got uh, another handful of guys that sort of between them have a large uh, share of running the industrial military complex in the U.S. Um, Mike Pompeo was in Israel two weeks before the attack was carried out, mm. um, so we uh, uh, assume that uh, part of his uh, trip was to green light the uh, uh, assassination. But this is, uh, this is standard American bully boy tactics. American Iran uh, taking out... Israel. S s fuck. America and Israel. Thank you for keep reminding me on that. It's early. Let me... Hold on. Coffee. Sip. Swallow. Yeah. Hey, it's, hey. I'm not, not, not D'Angelo. Um, it's... It's a uh, standard fare, right? When Saudi Arabia did it, everyone was up in arms. When Israel, uh, with the US approval, does it, it's okay. Even, even American Democrats, David Markham being the person I'm thinking of, said to me on Facebook, well, small Facebook, I got banned from Facebook. 
Hey, can you believe that? <laughs> I got banned from Facebook for a day. Yes, I can. I don't. Why? But I, no, I, 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 I'm, just, <laughs> I'm just joking. It's you not like I do. I don't say right. or do anything outrageous on Facebook. Right. Like I swear from time to time on Facebook, I say fuck this and fuck that. But, um, I, you know, it, it was either just a, 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 an accident, mistake, or B. Glitch, yeah. I, um, you know, I think probably a bunch of Christians complained about my marketing the Messiah ads. Uh, although I target them to atheists, I don't target them to Christians. So Christians shouldn't even be seeing them on mass. Right. Um, but it, it's a bit of, I got resurrected. I came back from the dead. Um, <laughs> I came back to life within one day because waiting three days is for pussies. I came back yeah. in one day. And I don't know if this has anything to do with it, but what I did do on the day when I got banned is I went on LinkedIn and I wrote a big long post about how I spend thousands of dollars of, of ad, on advertising on Facebook every month, how I run my large part of my businesses and communities through Facebook. And they, they banned me with no warning and no explanation. I didn't know if my ads were still running or not. I couldn't get into my, all my communities where I'm the only admin. Material impact on my business. I copied in the Australian Consumer Competition Commission, ACCC, who's already suing Facebook for having too much power in this country. And I copied in the managing director of uh, Facebook Australia and the communications director of Facebook Australia and said, I think this is illegal and I think the ACCC should go for you for this because you can't run a business like that. Uh, no explanation, no warning, no nothing, just you know, take a material impact on my business. And I got restored uh, 12 hours after I made the post. Now, I don't know. It could be a coincidence. Maybe they just, right. you know, said, whoops. But then no, no explanation, no apology Either after way. I got restored. Just right. uh, fuck Facebook, yeah. man. Like, I, I wish I could figure out how to do all my advertising and run all my communities without it. But they, they've got us by the balls to a certain yeah. extent. Anyway, yeah. let's talk about weed because i got to go. Yeah. Um, this is for Jimmy. Jimmy's getting high. Um <laughs> Couple of, the, the, the news that came across uh, my desk uh, a couple of days ago was a UN commission has reclassified cannabis. They're saying that it should no longer be uh, classified as a Schedule Four drug, where it mm -hmm. has been since 1961, a Schedule Idiotic. Four drug. Now, 53 member states of the Commission on Narcotic Drugs, the CND, mm -hmm. It's the UN central drug policy making body voted to remove cannabis from that schedule with a vote of 27 in favor, 25 against, and one abstention. He was now, high. <laughs> it's probably the Canadian. <laughs> now, in the bathroom. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Now, <laughs> they are still classifying it as being dangerous. Right. But not as dangerous as the rest of the drugs on Schedule 4. And the other part of that is it was still a close vote, 27 to 25 with one abstain. So yeah. obviously mentalities are changing, but even that is still, I, I'm a little surprised by the vote was that close. Every single study that I could find when we were doing our war on drug series yeah. on marijuana said the same thing. It's not, yeah. it's not, not dangerous for most people. There are some, there's a small percentage of people that have an adverse reaction, adverse reaction to it as they do to any vaccine or, you know, anything else, mm -hmm. booze, cigarettes, you name it. But uh, generally speaking, it's not dangerous. And in fact, probably beneficial for most people in most cases, both for pain relief, stress relief, just pleasurable feelings, sleep. improving your sex life and sleep yeah. and uh, watching comedies and listening to Pink Floyd, Dark Side of the Moon. So and they actually 70s listen to those. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 <laughs> well, I so, can tell yeah. you, uh, yeah. Yeah. I can tell you it hasn't been in Canada like when they brought it in. You know, they had, uh, they, everybody had their glass shoes on, uh, all the politicians, they, a little bit of an uproar, but it hasn't been uh, the, uh, it hasn't been the big mess that a lot of people were anticipating. It, it's actually been very, very smooth. Um, 
The weed know, is smooth it, or the uh, laws are smooth? Both. I mean, the quality <laughs> of uh, the quality of the product is amazing compared to right. what you would buy in a black market. Oh, it's right. consistent. And uh, there's always lineups nice. at the government stores. I mean, uh, all day. Um, you know? okay, Mute nice. your microphone, Kieran, for fuck's sake. <laughs> Sorry, that. Jeez, yeah, how, long no, been, been, how long have you so been doing this? Not, not Someone was talking about Kieran. marijuana and now I'm acting all uh, <laughs> spaced out, man. It hasn't so it's been, regulated. Uh, the quality is good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's so, uh, the tax money. I, I, I can remember trying to buy a bottle of whiskey for David Markham um, in Toronto online a few years ago for his birthday, for his 70th, and it was inordinately difficult. In fact, it was impossible. I had to get Tony Coniston, who was living in Toronto at the time, to go to a bottle mm. shop and buy it and take it to him for me. Wow. Um, is it How difficult is it to buy weed from these government-controlled shops? I mean, when you get in, they do check your ID. They're pretty strict. Uh, you know, there, there is a process in place, like they don't want sure. to just sell to kids or anything, but uh, no, I mean, the, uh, every province has a bit of a different way to uh, manage. Yeah, try it more quietly, Joanne. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Joanne, pull it together. Sorry, don't sorry. bang it. Oh, yeah. It's not his yeah. dick. It's a keyboard. <laughs> she can't hear this, can she? Yeah, she can. Oh, oh God. shit, oh, Jimmy. Okay. Come on, Jimmy. What are you thinking? <laughs> she's used to hearing the podcasts when I listen to it. <laughs> oh, oh, she's good. No. Yeah, she's yeah, good. yeah. She's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. She's Sorry, right. Joanne. Yeah. No, the, uh, no, it's, uh, what was I saying? Yeah, so every province has a bit of a different legislation mm -hmm. to the way they sell it. Mm. But in, like in Quebec, uh, I mean, it's, uh, it's all government stores. The, there's uh, there's security when you get in and once you get in it's pretty uh, you know it's like uh, they have uh, displays and you choose what type the people behind the counter help you you say what you're looking for kind of a buzz you want a lot of THC a little bit of nice. THC uh, yeah nice. yeah it's it's a 7-eleven yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah decent you know it's not can't wait it's, and do you do you have any data on what's happened in terms of uh crime rates od rates any negative uh societal impacts of the legalization i mean uh i don't have uh, i don't have any data per se but i mean i do read the news quite a bit and i do keep you know i do keep up with my stuff and uh there's not really anything i mean i've never you know, I used to go out a lot, like less uh, now, you know, too much uh, gray hair. But I mean, uh, you would never see a bar fight with people high on weed, you know. They it's, can't. Uh, no. no. I tried. It's, uh, no, yeah. I, and I, I would think it's beneficial in a lot of ways for the people that, uh, let's say they can't get their, you know, the drug addicts that can't get their fix uh, with other types of drugs, they'll revert to uh the pot you know uh, mm. to get, uh, some sort of fix and uh, mm, no it hasn't uh, the crime crime's not very high to begin with in montreal so it's uh it's not the it's not bad at all it hasn't been is, uh, is that because you've got wolf cop protecting the streets <laughs> wolf yeah. cop! have you have you uh, seen the canadian 2014 yeah. masterpiece wolf cop no, no, no. I got to look that up after. <laughs> oh, I just watched Get it last first. night, man. It is a, Get it is high a, first. It is, yeah. <laughs> it is a masterpiece. Yeah, no, no. I'm a wolf <laughs> cop. <laughs> By the way, I just wanted to say to you guys, thank you for all the years of uh, entertainment while I've been doing renos. It's been amazing. Like, uh, you know, I follow both the Cold War, Life of Caesar. I mean, that's all the time. I, that's all I have time for. But I just want to slip that in there. Oh, no, thanks, wow, Jimmy. Thank yeah. <laughs> Don't clap. Just send money, Jimmy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's right. Or pot. That's already being done. Yeah. <laughs> so I went and looked at the um, Colorado data. It's been legal in Colorado since 2014, I think. Mm -hmm. um, it brings in about 1% of the state's budget which doesn't, in, in, in terms of taxes, right? Which doesn't sound massive, but that's pretty good. I think in Australia, until China just banned our coal, 
uh, mm. coal, the coal industry was worth about 6% of our economy. Mm. Um, so if weeds were, was worth 1%, that'd be, you know, a lot. That'd be a big right. deal for us. Um, but I, I tried to find negative stories about the impact of weed in Colorado, and I really couldn't find anything. I spent a good hour looking for stuff. I found some stories in the right-wing media about teenage suicide rates in Colorado going up this year, which they have been. And Colorado, along with Utah and a lot of the other high-altitude uh, states, have really bad suicide problems over there. But, of course, there's nothing tying it to the legalization of weed. Um, right. this, the suicide rates this year are probably related to COVID, according to most of the articles that I read, and just the pressures of life in America in general, the political, the toxicity, the social toxicity, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Of course, I saw, too, speaking of Canada, I saw a Robin Williams quote yesterday. He said, Canada is such a lovely place. It's like a nice apartment that's uh, sitting above a meth store or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> a meth lab. That's it. Isn't that, isn't that no, right? A nice apartment sitting above a meth yeah, lab. Yeah. You know, with yeah. all due respect to Ray, you know, it's, it's been a fun show to watch the last four years, you know, like from up here, but I mean, it's, uh, <laughs> you know, like with uh, Trump and we're all looking at it. We're like, eh, but I mean, it's, it's like anything, you know, like every country has its, uh, as its phases and you know we've had our school in canada and uh yeah but uh, all this to say that i don't quote me on this stat but i think the quebec government had a um, this year had a 40 million dollar profit from uh, the stores from uh, the uh, legal sale of uh, pot you know so don't quote me on that number but i think right. i read that it was about that but the way you have to see it is that that's forty million dollars less in the pockets of the black market, of the mm -hmm. mafia, of everything. So, yeah. you know, it's gonna get sold either way. Uh, if, if it was up to me, I would just leave, I would just decriminalize everything across the board, and have government sell it. I mean, it's it's a multi-billion-dollar market when yes. it comes. To yes. Yeah. I agree with you, and there there is like uh, comparing all of that to Australia. Um, the you know it's still mostly uh, illegal uh, uh, for consumption, for selling across Australia. Canberra, the Australian capital territory where Canberra is, where our federal government uh, resides, is talking about trying to decriminalise all drugs. They're trying to pass a bill to decriminalise everything. That's mm. the beginning of some sense here. And we're making a little bit of progress on medical cannabis, just CBD uh, products. But... Right. We're so far fucked. The, so far the New South Wales the US. It's crazy. government had a, had a go recently at uh, decriminalising, but the problem they've got is the Premier is embroiled in three or four massive corruption scandals and needs mm. the support of right-wing uh, side of her party to, to mm. prop her up. So she they, they backed right happen. down on that. Yeah. Jeez. And, you know, every week, and I've talked about this before on the show, but almost every week here, there's still there's a story in the media about cops busting marijuana importers and dealers and taking marijuana off the streets. And you never hear in the media coverage of that, um, you know, despite the fact that uh, half of the states in the US have now legalized it, it's legalized in Canada. Uh, all of these reports say that it's uh, not harmful and, in fact, is probably beneficial and blah, 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 blah. Yeah. The media is just not going to bat at all. And, again, I sense uh, some sort of a cover-up here. Some, I mean, why wouldn't the media be calling bullshit? You know these journalists are smoking weed. I saw a story yes. that came yes. out in the Australian uh, media the other day for a change talking about, I think is the decriminalization of all drugs um, effort in Canberra. And the, one of the politicians who's pushing for this pointed out that uh, we've had a hundred years of um, prohibition on drugs in this country. And yet, according to most surveys, 73% of Australians have used or do use illicit drugs after a hundred years of prohibition. So he was saying it doesn't work. It's exactly. a complete failure, costs us a fortune. 
has all of the legal consequences of people getting caught, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Somebody's trying to come into the call now. Nitin Walia. I'm about to wrap it up, Nitin. But thanks anyway for joining in. Um, hey, Nitin, we're about to, we're just winding up, Nitin, but uh, welcome to the show anyway. Thanks for coming. Yeah. Oh, bye, Nitin. Um, so, uh, it's probably, I thought it was a, a Zoom stalker who's going to show us his dick. Um, you know, it, it, the, the, he's right, but you never, you rarely anyway, hear that talked about in the media here whenever they're talking about the bus. It's all of right. this. Cops are waving a flag. Look at us. We busted this stuff. I said, don't you have something better to do than bust yeah. weed dealers, man? Like, stop taking our weed. Yeah. Go do something useful with your time. Stop stealing our weed, motherfuckers. <laughs> like, don't you have... Don't yeah. you have a, I like was counting on our weed. Don't you have a yeah. murderer to chase or something? Something real? Right. You yeah. know, go after yeah. a, some white-collar criminals? Why are you fucking with our weed supply? Right. And as for like Australia, I think it's something that's going to change quite quickly for you guys. All it takes is one politician to get the ball rolling a bit. The right timing. I think you'd be surprised how fast, like tr before Trudeau, I would never, ever would have thought that this would have been done in Canada. And when he brought it up, the ball got rolling actually very quickly. And there was uh, surprisingly a bit of opposition, but... Uh, I think in the end, most people are, are very happy with it. You know? Yeah, we've yeah. had a we've had a conservative government here for the last seven years, and I think when we finally get rid of them, yeah. uh, we'll probably see the change happen. Then, meanwhile, getting back to this UN vote, I see that the United States voted to remove cannabis from Schedule Four, but said. Uh, it is consistent with the science demonstrating that while a safe and effective cannabis derived therapeutic has been developed, cannabis itself continues to pose significant risks to public health and should continue to be controlled under the international drug control conventions. This is despite half of the states in the U S having legalized it and Biden's camp yeah. now talking about wanting to legalize it at a federal level. Yeah. But uh, I guess the uh, Trump uh, appointed person on the Commission of Narcotic Drugs uh, still wants to put up the uh, anti-marijuana, it's a big danger message while they still can. Well, it's still, it's still a baby step in the right direction, so I'll take it. And I did actually work really hard for about five and a half minutes trying to find the negative side effects of uh, cannabis. The best I could find was if you smoke a ton of it, I mean a shit ton of it, almost every day for decades, eventually, in theory, you will have breathing problems. And of course, the first thing that I said to that was, what about gummies? What about edibles? I mean, so Vapes. even that is not true. What about vaping it? <clears throat> vaping yeah, yeah i don't know and again but what it is, is there's a lot of unknowns because remember for the longest time because it was scheduled for they weren't allowed to do any kind of detailed research so so but again there's no hard evidence that this is really bad for you it's just conventional wisdom and that's kind of hard to uh to change it i thought you were going to say after your five and a half minutes of detailed research what, the one thing you found was the gummies <laughs> get stuck in your teeth and you have to like do. use a I should, uh, toothpick uh, to get them uh, out uh, yeah, 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 uh, yeah. But it's worth it. It's worth it. <laughs> Getting it out of your teeth, I mean. But yeah. All right. It's time. I've got to go. Uh, thank you, Kieran and Joanne, for joining us. Um, and Nick, uh, hey, and thanks for Nick, having me. Uh, briefly. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, briefly. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Ray, for showing up. Um, We'll be back uh, yeah. in a couple of weeks with another yeah. bullshit filter. Happy Christmas, everyone, if I don't speak to you before then. Yeah, or yeah. happy Anaxagoras Day. Um, I tried to uh, get that up about 15 years ago, Anaxagoras Day, to celebrate the uh, first recorded atheist in history, Anaxagoras, Ooh, that we should huh? celebrate him this time of year, celebrate Anaxagoras. He got himself into a lot of trouble in ancient Greece when he said, the sun wasn't a god; it was just a ball of fire in the sky. Got himself into a lot of, lot of, lot of trouble. Um, I think he had his tongue cut out, and then he was executed. Dissing Apollo. 
Yeah, that's right. Mm. So um, happy Anaxagoras Day, everyone. Stay safe, particularly uh, you, Ray, in America. Canada's pretty <laughs> fucked as well with your COVID, aren't you now, Jimmy? We, we, we got problems a bit over here, you know, but uh, it's uh, it's mostly an old, like uh, the, the really bad uh, situations, the old folks home, the long, mm. uh, long-term care facilities, you know, it's, mm. uh, that's where it's rampant. But mm. uh, I mean, look, with the vaccines rolling out, so I think we'll be okay in a couple of months. And you got weed. And Kieran, <laughs> stay safe in Sydney because it's uh, yeah, rampant I, I'm on there the, too. I'm on the south side of the river, so yeah, I'm that's right. not going to make it, it. You know, it doesn't care about rivers, <laughs> Kieran. You're like I'm, you're like I'm Trump. Going, oh, it's okay. It'll go away. Door. I'm on the south side of the river. It'll be fine. Don't worry about it. It's all going to be fine. Can we just nuke COVID? Can we just drop a bomb <laughs> on COVID? Yeah, let's nuke anyway. Sydney. Now, the, there's, <laughs> there's so much there's so much corruption in Sydney that my electric is. Anthony Albanese's electorate, which is the leader of the opposition, they got robbed of um, $23 million in infrastructure development. Robbed? Went to, yeah, yeah, yeah. They, um, they spent $90 million beautifying an old quarry in, um, up, in, up in North Sydney mm. and said it was for councils that got forced to be amalgamated, but that, mm. that council never got amalgamated. Mm. And, um, well, somebody's brother-in-law did well out of that, I'm sure. The quarry, beautiful, you know. <laughs> the, the quarry, I should go the quarry beautification company. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Ray's putting it in his we, pipe today, by the looks of it. We, we have no transport infrastructure right. anymore, is what I'm saying, and I can't go anywhere, so. Uh, I think you're, you're good. I'll be you've, safe. Got an Apple, yeah. you've got an Apple pencil, though, by the looks of it. So yeah. Stay safe. Yeah. yeah. I just got it the other day. I'm, um, is it, you love it? Got to learn it. Yeah, I do, actually. It's... um. It's just lovely. Mine, Hi. mine's sitting behind me in a charger. Mm. Yeah. All right, it, burn it, make it. Yeah, yeah. I don't type anymore. I just write. I just write again, which is fantastic. All right. <laughs> okay. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks for sharing, Kieran. Bye, everybody. <laughs> I just stroke it. Yeah. Okay. Bye. 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 <laughs>